this video, I'll demonstrate and explain the startup options for the MPIEC controllers when using MotionWorks IEC. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. The MPIEC controller platform allows the user to back up and restore startup data such as the archive, retained variable data, and network configuration. Startup options for auto cold start and manual cold start are available to streamline the process of deploying a machine and installing code updates without data loss. Now let's look at this in more detail. For this video, I'm using an MP3300 IEC controller with firmware level 3.7 and MotionWorks IEC version 3.7. The controller starts up with data from two sources, flash storage memory and battery-backed SRAM. Data on the flash is called the archive, which you can see on the web UI. This archive can be saved or restored with a computer, and it consists of different files generated by MotionWorks IEC. These files include the compiled code, user units and other system configuration settings, and servo parameter settings for each servo axis. Any CAM tables and recipe data may also exist here, and the source code may exist here, although it is for reference only and does not execute. The archive is the data on the controller that would be common to all replicas of a particular machine and it is most of what you need to back up the controller in case of replacement or to load a previous version of the code. The battery-powered SRAM contains controller data that is likely to be unique for all copies of a machine, whether on the same factory floor or in different production facilities. This includes the date, time, alarm history, absolute encoder offsets, IP address, and the online value of all variables marked retain. There is an option for the IP address to be overwritten by a file in the archive, and I'll demonstrate that a little later. And it's also possible to save or restore retained variable data with a file on your PC. First, let me talk about backing up. There are a couple of ways to get the archive on your PC. One way is to receive from the controller through the web UI, and this is the best method for a complete backup. Here's the web UI of the MP3300 IEC, and I'm logged in as administrator with password MP3300. I'll go to the setup menu to see the archive and receive the zip file to my download folder. The other way to get this file is to generate the archive in MotionWorks IEC and save. This archive, however, does not contain user files such as CAM tables, but it's a great way to send out code changes in the field. The value of the variables marked retain is not saved in the archive, but is saved in a separate file. Any variable can be marked retain. Retain means that the online value of these variables will be retained when the controller is off and will not be reset to the initial value when the controller powers up again. These variables are often used to store teach points and machine calibration values that will be different between machines even if they are running the same archive. Retained variables that will be saved should be marked PDD as well. This means process data directory and has the added benefit of making these variables visible in the web UI under status as long as they're not a structure or an array. So whether visible here or not, to back these up, I will stop the PLC to prevent further update by the application code. Take note that the online values here, as well as visible in the web UI, are all set to nine. All the retained variables are currently nine. And I will save the value of these variables to my PC. After this, you would reboot or warm start the controller to resume operation. Sometime later, the archive and retained data may have to be restored. I would go to Archive, Send, and add the archive from before. 
You choose Clean Install if the archive contains all the files, and you choose Add Replace Only if you want to leave the user files. I'll explain about the IP address box in just a minute. So send and install. You do need to reboot for an archive to run. And now to restore the retained variables. Here under status, notice some of the values have changed. These are eight instead of nine. So as before, I will stop the controller, restore, add that file, retain variables, send and restore, and the values are nine again. When controllers operate on the same network, it is necessary for each to have a unique IP address, even if they run the same archive. The network settings in SRAM are visible in the web UI under Ethernet config. However, if a single controller exists on an isolated network, then the IP address can be stored in the project archive as the file network.xml. Hardware configuration version 3.6 and higher has the TCP IP settings option, generate portable network override configuration file. If you check this box and online save, you'll see this in the web UI under project archive. And it's a simple list of network settings. Network.xml overrides the IP address configured in SRAM. Now I rebooted and network.xml is overriding the IP address configured in SRAM as indicated by the message badge in the web UI. This file will prevent changing the network settings in the web UI or hardware configuration. I will also receive this archive. Now I've got a new controller with the default IP address. You can see it has no archive. And I'll send that archive with the IP address. And since I know this archive contains that network.xml file, I'll use the checkbox to send the whole archive, including network.xml, to the controller. If I would leave it unchecked, that would exclude network.xml and use the IP address from Ethernet config. This feature allows OEMs to install the project archive and set the network IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway all in one step. Here I am back online with the installed project archive, the network.xml file, and here we've got an alarm pertaining to warm start and cold start, which we will talk about next. You have probably noticed that there are two ways to start the PLC from the web UI, warm and cold. The dialog says that warm only initializes non-retentive data, and cold initializes all data, retentive and non-retentive. In other words, warm start does not set retained variables to the initial value, but cold start does. This is the same behavior the programmer would see in MotionWorks IEC for cold and warm start. Warm start occurs at every power on and is the normal way for the controller to start up. At warm start, Every variable marked retain is assigned its value from the battery-backed SRAM. Remember, you would mark a variable retain in order to save teach points or other calibration data that's unique for each copy of a particular machine. If the variable is not marked retain, then it's assigned the initial value at warm start. The initial value is a property of every variable. You can see in the init column. Now, structures and arrays use the initialize multi-element variable window to set an initial value for each element of the structure or array. Immediately after this, the warm system task runs one time. The warm task is an alternative method to set the initial value at power on, and it allows you to use a mathematical expression to calculate initial values. I've got a POU here called non-retain init to calculate the initial value of a non-retained variable at every warm start. Here in the watch window, you see I have all the values set to nine and true. Off camera, I did clear that initial cold start alarm we had because I wanted to show the warm start first. And you see that the retained data survived the warm start 
Well, the non-retained data has the initial value, except for this element, app2, the initial value is set to 3, but the warm start system task applies the calculated value. When you load a project archive with retained variables to the controller, it may not be logically possible for the controller to do a warm start at power up. And a common cause of this failed warm start, like we saw before, is that the controller is at factory default condition. There simply is no data in the SRAM of the new controller from which to restore the online value of the retained variables in the project. Therefore, the retained variables must be initialized, which means cold start. So to save the step of a cold start after project archive install in a new controller, you can configure an automatic cold start if warm start is not possible. In fact, this was the only option in version 3.5 and earlier. With versions 3.7 and higher, just check the box under resource called perform cold start if warm start is not possible. And you online save that. And that will put a file in the archive called auto cold boot. And you'll see this warning message in the web UI when an automatic cold start occurs. This automatic cold start gives OEMs an option for a more streamlined deployment of the controller in new equipment. Automatic cold start is not always appropriate. Consider the scenario where a project update is deployed to a machine using the archive. Part of the update was to change the data type of one or more of the retained variables. This means the current data in the SRAM does not match the data in the new project. For example, if the SRAM holds the data for a 64-bit LREAL data type, how can it write that value into a bool data type? In a case like this, warm start will fail, and auto cold start would set all the retained variables to their initial value. But initializing the SRAM means that machine-specific calibration data will be lost. In this type of scenario, it is important not to use the auto cold start feature. Saving the hardware configuration online will delete that auto cold boot file. And it's important to save the SRAM so that the calibration data can be restored if you ever do need a manual cold start. Let me illustrate manual cold start by means of this example project I've been using called Project V1. Let's say Project V1 is an operation on a number of machines and updates are planned meaning version 2, 3, 4, etc. And the machine requires a set of calibration values unique to each machine deployment. The project has one retained calibration integer and another calibration structure. The application data has a separate integer and structure. And here's the definition of the calibration structure and the app structure. Furthermore, let's assume it takes a bit of time here to come up with these calibration data values, so they must not be lost when we do any of the project updates in the future. For the demonstration, I just have them all set here to 9. And you recall I do have these values saved to a file on my computer. Now, sometime later, I've created project version 2, and it's ready to be deployed on all of the machines. And one improvement to the project was to change the data type definition of this structure element from bool to lreal. I'll just create the archive here in Motionworks IEC. In the web UI now, I will send that archive for project 2 and do a clean install. And after reboot, I have an alarm and it says that the PLC could not perform a warm start, cold start is required, and this is because the retained memory doesn't match the project anymore. In fact, here in the status, you can see that the data here is not correct, and that was expected for the calibration data. It used to be a 9. If I had not yet saved the original retained data, this would be my last chance to revert back to version 1 of the project and save the retained data again. I don't have to do that because I saved them before. And there is no choice but to do a cold start. And after another reboot, stop the controller 
and restore those retained variables again. And there's a warning here that not all of the variables could be restored. See debugging output, that's right here below. Let's refresh it. And it says unable to restore the retained variables. And those app data variables with the app struct data type were not restored as expected. But back in Motionworks at EC, I do have my calibration data all set to nine. And the initial values or calculated values are set to the rest of the data. So finally, we'll do a warm start and the machine is back in action with version two and calibration values intact. I hope you have a better understanding now of the various options for controller startup and that you'll be on the right track to implement the options that are best for each application. Thanks for watching this video and go to yaskawa.com slash IECSW to download the latest version of Motionworks IEC 3.